good evening doctors uh, my name is ankur gautam and on the behalf of fdc and metox i welcome you all to yet another episode of uh, 52 weeks of diabetes essentials with dr sanjay kalra uh, doctors that as holy month of ramadan is approaching uh, we have planned three lecture series on ramadan uh, uh, and we have completed or we have already completed two lectures uh, as of now uh, one ramadan fasting and health and one risk stratification and pre pre ramadan counseling uh, if you have not seen it you, you can again watch it in our archives or or on the youtube links and uh, and doctors that uh, today's session is uh, management of diabetes mellitus in ramadan and uh, today's session is brought to you by your uh, zero calorie uh, hydration partner in azal zero and now i would like to welcome our host dr sanjay kalra sir president South Asian Federation of Endocrine Society. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ankur, and good evening, everybody. Today is uh, the third in our episode of uh, discussions on Ramzan and diabetes, and today we'll be talking about glucose lowering drugs. Uh, now, over the last two weeks, our experts, Dr. Shaila Sheikh and Dr. Hamid Ashraf, have spoken about the benefits of fasting, the physiology of fasting, the dangers of fasting. they have also spoken about risk stratification <clears throat> now once that is done once we have stratified the risk of our patients and we have placed them as high moderate and low then we come to an informed shared decision making about whether to fast uh, ideally anyone who wishes to fast should have a pre ramzan assessment and that should have been done already now we have just uh, around 4 days of the shaban month left to go ideally this pre ramzan assessment should have been done in the month of uh rajab so uh assuming that that's been done now we move on to our treatment algorithm for the next one month we have taken a medical history we have decided the risk status of the particular person we have talked about whether to fast or not and now the patient the person has decided yes i want to fast if the patient is at high risk of hypoglycemia or a high risk patient then certainly the glucose monitoring should be more aggressive more frequent this is called glucometric guardianship glycemic guardianship means that you are a guardian for the person's glucose but you cannot be a glycemic guardian unless you are a glucometric guardian which means you ensure that glucose levels are checked regularly during ramzan uh, we all should be aware that there are numerous fatwas from the leading ulama of the world which say that testing glucose is not haram because nothing is going into the body if at all anything is happening one point of one drop of blood is coming out of the body so it is safe to and it must be encouraged that we uh, check our glucose during ramzan on a separate note the south asian federation of endocrine societies has declared its theme for the next one year and that is metabolic mentorship that is what we are doing today we are mentoring each other about metabolic health within metabolic mentorship uh, safis has uh, proposed that it will work on glycemic guardianship and glucometric guardianship and that is exactly what we are doing today now let's go through all the drugs one by one and see how their dose should be changed during ramzan for metformin monotherapy usually no dose adjustment is required but in your case your patient happens to be taking three times a day metformin then you can of course the afternoon dose will be skipped and that should be combined with the iftar dose so maybe it was 500 mg three times a day we will change it to 500 mg before suhoor and 1000 mg at or after iftar in case the patient had been taking sustained release metformin once a day with breakfast you might wish to continue the same or you can shift it to iftar time the same dose but the timing will change now for acarbose and voglibose no dose modification is required if it was acarbose or voglibose three times a day with three meals now since the patient is going to take two meals it becomes two doses so the afternoon dose is skipped same for glitazones in case the patient is on pyoglitazone and there may be in some countries a few patients on rosiglitazone continue the same dose but shift it to iftar time for short acting insulin secretagogues like repaglinide which we have in india <clears throat> if the patient had been taking three meals a day and was taking repaglinide thrice a day we just change 
and uh, we make it two times a day. So you re change the distribution. Number of meals is equal to number of repaglinide doses. In case the iftar meal is high, you may, you may think of increasing the dose of repaglinide at iftar. So this should be individualized. So you might end up having a prescription where there is a repaglinide one milligram with suhoor and two milligram at iftar. It will depend upon the meal size. For GLP-1 receptor agonists, whether they are oral or whether injectable, if the dose titration has been done earlier, no further dose modification will be required. It is just that if the patient is uh, taking liraglutide or lixacentide in the morning earlier, now a good idea maybe would be to shift it to iftar. If the patient is taking oral semaglutide in the morning, uh, I think it would be prudent to continue the same thing half an hour before suhoor. Uh, otherwise, at uh, iftar time, then the patient has a choice of breaking the fast uh, with uh, a glass of water, maximum 150 ml, and maybe one date, and taking semaglutide and then having to wait half an hour extra to uh, have a meal with the family. But that is difficult. So for oral semaglutide, we should continue the same. For injectable liraglutide, lixacinatide, we can shift the dose to after iftar. DPP-4 inhibitors do not require any dose modification during Ramzan, so we continue exactly whatever dose was going on earlier. This means that if you are giving an FDC, fixed dose combination of uh, bildagliptin plus metformin, cetagliptin plus metformin, linagliptin plus metformin, exactly the same dose will continue during Ramzan. Now, sulfonylureas and insulins, these are two drugs where we have to be careful. So let's talk about sulfonylureas first. Once daily sulfonylurea, whether <coughs> glimipiride or glyclazide, just change the time and change it to iftar. So if the patient had been taking once daily glimipiride or glyclazide with breakfast, we shifted to iftar time. Had it been twice daily, the iftar or evening dose will remain the same. The morning dose should be reduced to roughly half. So if the patient was taking glyclazide 60 milligram with breakfast, now with suhoor, we'll make it 30 milligram. Had it been glimibride 2 milligram, now it becomes 1 milligram. Older drugs like glibenclamide should be avoided. So we should really avoid uh, glibenclamide in every person, especially in the elderly and especially in Ramzan. So take this opportunity to wean your patients off glibenclamide. SGL2 inhibitors, no dose adjustment are required. And uh, those on multiple diaptic drugs. Now, in general, metformin, glitazones, DPP-4 inhibitor, SGL2 inhibitor, all will remain the same. But uh, when it comes to sulfonylureas, repaglinide insulin, you try to reduce the dose by about 25 to 30%. Do remember also that for SGL2 inhibitors, we should change the time. And instead of giving the drug with suhoor, we can give it with iftar or after iftar. This will help reduce the risk of dehydration as well. Glucose monitoring is important. The higher the risk uh, status, the more the need for monitoring. The higher the number of drugs that are being given, the more the need for monitoring. Monitoring is especially important in persons on insulin. So those who are on uh, a single dose of uh, basal insulin, NPH, Detamid, Glargine, or Degludec, you reduce by 15 to 30% and take it at iftar. So maybe patient was on 20 units earlier. Now I might make it 16 units after iftar. If uh, the patient was on twice daily NPH or Detamir, we do have a few patients, then <clears throat> the morning and evening doses are interchanged. The usual morning dose, break fast, break fast dose goes to iftar, which is the breaking of the fast. So the usual morning dose goes to evening, right? Okay. And the nighttime dose is reduced by 50% and that is taken at suhoor time. So morning and evening interchange and the evening comes to morning. Now, short-acting insulin, uh, normal dose uh, at iftar because dinner is being taken. Lunchtime dose will obviously be omitted. Suhoor dose we should omit by 25 to 50%. So let us say the patient was on rapid-acting insulin 10 units in the morning. Uh, I might give the patient 6 or 7 units to begin with and then monitor and see what happens. Monitoring is important, like we said. Now, most of our patients are on premixed insulin. Those who are on once daily premixed insulin, whether at breakfast or at dinner, 
let them take the same dose at iftar. Those who are on twice daily, again, the night dose will remain the same, the dinner dose. The dinner dose, earlier it used to be taken before break dinner, now it will be taken with or after iftar. And the suhur dose, the breakfast dose should be reduced by 20 to 50%. Again, let us say my patient was on uh, premixed insulin, uh, 20 units, uh, I would perhaps make it 12 units or so to begin with and then see what happens. If patients on three times daily dosage, breakfast, lunch and dinner, the lunch one will obviously get omitted. The iftar and suhur doses now, iftar usually you will keep it the same and then see what happens. Suhur again reduced by around 20-30% and then see what happens. So in general, I would uh, counsel for a 20-30% to 30 reduction and then monitoring. It would be a good idea to do a test fast. Now, you can do the test fast in Rajab. You can also do it in uh, 15, on the 15th, 16th, and 17th day of uh, this month. Uh, but <coughs> that is past. So still we have three days. Patient might want to keep a fast tomorrow or day after just to see what kind of dose suits him or her. For those who are on uh, pump, insulin pump therapy, the same rules will apply for carbohydrate counting and bolus rate decision. But for basal rate, you reduce the dose by 20 to 40 percent in the evening hours before iftar and increase the dose by 20 percent immediately after iftar. So change the basal rate. The last few hours of fasting period, the day's dose should be reduced by one third. The dose can be increased by one fourth or so after iftar. So this is what we wanted to speak about today. We have seen so many questions and comments coming in from everyone last two weeks. Uh, let's continue with the discussion. In general, be aware that uh, with modern therapy and with modern therapy and with modern monitoring, our patients, the vast majority of them can fast safely. So that is the beauty, the strength of metabolic mentorship. We can mentor them pre-Ramzan that this is what we can offer you. This is what we can do for you. And before and during and after Ramzan, do not forget to fulfill the responsibility that God has given you, that God has given us to be glycemic guardians and to be glucometric guardians of all our patients. Dr. Abhishek Pandey asks how to avoid hypoglycemia during Ramzan. So, number one, reduce the dose of sulfonylureas and insulin at breakfast, at suhur time. <coughs> Secondly, regular monitoring. Third, uh, try to do a test fast uh, during the month of, uh, uh, during uh, uh, the preceding months, Rajab or Shaban. Another thing is risk stratification. So if your patient is at very high risk, patient has got hypoglycemia, unawareness, renal failure, then would be a, it would be a good idea to counsel the patient not to fast. Another question, Dr. Vinay Desai says, what about imiglimin and uh, Ramzan? The answer is we can continue the same dose. We can continue imiglimin along with metformin, gliptin, sulfonylurea, insulin. That is the beauty of the drug. It can be combined with each and every drug. It is an insulin secretagogue as well as sensitizer. So it has dual effect. It, been, it can be combined with all drugs. The contraindication in renal failure, you have to reduce the dose to 500 BD or 500 OD. That is one contraindication. Apart from that, be watchful for GI side effects. Some patients may present with diarrhea or pain abdomen. <coughs> Dr. Vinay also says how to suspect euglycemic DKA clinically. Okay, so symptoms will be weakness, fatigue and difficulty in breathing. The signs will be tachycardia, tachypnea, use of accessory muscles of respiration, thready pulse. So that way, uh, you will be able to diagnose clinically or you will be able to suspect clinically that patient is in acidosis. Tachypnea would be the main thing. Uh, when you check the glucose, it will be normal. When you check the urine ketones, they will be moderate or large. So that is how to suspect. How will you confirm? You will have to do a, a, a acid-base study and you will get a low pH. But in my practice, I don't do that. Clinically, it is enough. You take a history. Patient will usually tell you, I've been taking uh, SGL to transmitters for a long period of time. But now what happened? Now, suddenly I went on a fast. I decided to do keto diet. And then I got in trouble. So 
the three things which will predispose to euglycemic DKA, number one, deficiency of insulin. Patient might come and tell you, I was taking insulin, I stopped on my own. Uh, number two, deficiency of fluid in hot summer. And number three, deficiency of carbohydrate. Like patient decides to go on a fast without telling us or decides to go on keto diet without telling us. Uh, we welcome uh, Dr. Alina Zakaji also. So today we were discussing about the various uh, drugs that are used in Ramzan and how they should be uh, modified. In general, all the drugs are safe. All the drugs uh, except sulfonylureas and insulin require mi minimal dose adjustment. The lunchtime doses will be stopped, obviously. For sulfonylureas, try to reduce the morning dose by about 50%. For insulin, try to reduce the morning dose of premixed insulin or rapid acting insulin by about 25 to 30 to 40 percent. Do monitor regularly, practice glucometric guardianship. I do monitor regularly and make sure that your patients are able to fast in a meaningful, in a safe, in a satisfying manner. This brings us to the end of uh, the series that we had planned for Ramzan this year. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone for having been with us. I would also like to especially thank Dr. Shaila Sheikh and Dr. Hamid Ashraf, our speakers over the past two weeks, who had answered much of the questions on dose adjustment. Uh, Dr. Kishan Gaur says, uh, microalbumin test positive. What does this mean? This means that there is damage to the endothelium. Endothelium means the inner lining of the blood vessels. It is a sign of uh, high risk for heart disease and kidney disease. So. The first treatment is good lifestyle. Stop smoking. Take adequate diet, reasonable proteins. Second, take good care of your glucose. Bring it down to normal. Every drug is safe. Number three, bring your blood pressure down. Even if BP is normal, uh, sometimes the doctor may prescribe an ACE inhibitor or an ARB in low dose. Fourth, Add drugs which are known to reduce microalbumin and or albumin and which are known to improve long-term outcomes. And we welcome and Azab uh, to Minam Inamji, who is uh, joining us from Pakistan. Mom, welcome and love and respect and best wishes to you as well. Uh, so the drugs that we can add to correct microalbuminuria are number one, SGLT2 inhibitors, dapagliflozin, Canagliflozin, empagliflozin, any of them, they should be added to whatever glucose lowering therapy is going on. And the second is a drug known as finerenone, F-I-N-E-R-E-N-O-N-E. -E. Finerenone is a drug which is used to uh, suppress the mineralocorticoid uh, receptor, the excess activity on the mineralocorticoid receptor. And this helps a lot. Patient is on Ramipril plus Telmisartan, which is not a good idea at all. Not at all. It should be only one of these. Either Ramipril or Telmisartan. Giving these two together will harm the patient. So do speak with your doctor and get one of these reduced. If the patient has diabetes, even if the patient doesn't have diabetes, uh, then SGL2 inhibitor should be added. Canna, DAPA or Empagliflozin. If the patient has type 2 diabetes, then Fenrenone must be added. So that we must do, but the first thing is to stop Ramipril Telmisartan and maybe do a sodium potassium and renal function again. So with this, I'd like to thank everyone for their questions and comments. And a warm welcome once again to Inamji. And we wish you and we wish everyone a safe and satisfying fast during Ramzan. Warm welcome to Dr. Vinayak Ji as well. Vinayak Sharma Ji, thanks for being with us. And with this, I would like to hand over back to Team FTC today. Yeah, thank you very much. Sanjay sir for take, taking on the topic and answering all the questions and I would like to thank all the uh, doctors that who are listening to us and attending us and uh, for making difference in all the diabetes patient uh, that who are practicing Ramadan. So thank you so much and good night everyone. Thank you. Good night Jai Hind.